All right, look, another... And it's funny, you know, some stories don't make massive headlines, don't require a prime ministerial press conference or, you know, pictures at seven. Some stories just creep up on a country and suddenly you realise that they're an issue. And it's funny, i got Kelly here who runs the excellent Kapiti Horafanua Traffic Updates website, and I, which I do follow, actually. And I became aware of this issue first through there and then through all my social media feeds, which I try and curate to be very much about New Zealand because uh, I'm a New Zealander and this is where I live. And you know what's getting increasing coverage is the issue of potholes. The Mayor of Parua, Anita Baker, has talked about potholes. Potholes are now, and I realise this purely through social media osmosis, potholes are a thing in New Zealand. There is an issue with potholes. There are funny memes of people in wetsuits with their heads sticking out of potholes. There's a great one of if New Zealand had an aircraft carrier and an F-15 on a flight deck with a big pothole in the aircraft carrier flight deck. I'm just saying, I know you're on the phone, Kelly, but, um, you know, it's like your websites like yours tell me yeah. for real New Zealanders, potholes are a real bloody issue, right? They really are. And it's not just a, a matter of, um, oh, there's a pothole I run over. They're actually damaging cars. I mean, I've had a lot of people on my page say they've, They've crashed, they've come off the road. I mean, okay, nothing too serious, but they're uploading photos of big alloy wheels, brims, being absolutely bent out of shape. Yeah. Um, you know, just for hitting a pothole. It's it's ridiculous. And that's not even necessarily on the 100k roads. You know, that's, yep. that's the f local roads and all that sort of thing. So, all right. So it is a thing. It may not be the war in Ukraine. It may not be the latest inflation rate, but it's a real thing that affects real people. And one party that's come out and starting to make a bit of noise about it is ACT and their transport spokesperson, Simon Court, who joins us now. Simon, welcome back to the platform. Nice to have you with us. Oh, good morning, Sean. Good morning to all your listeners. Yeah. So this platform thing, as I say, I thought what's, maybe a few months ago, I thought what's with all the pothole thing, sorry. And now I kind of realise it is a thing, isn't it? Look, it's a real issue. Uh, Act uh, asked the Minister for Transport a few questions like, how many complaints have been received in the last five years about potholes? And it turns out that they've doubled since 2018. In fact, in 2018, they only had about 280 complaints to NZTA. This year already, it's 555, and they're heading for about 700 for the year, Sean. Wow. And, and look, more and more on social media. Uh, I, I think there was a story from Coromandel or somewhere with 20 cars lined up that had all gone over the same pothole and couldn't go anywhere. Uh, Sean, I mean, I heard uh, uh, and saw some footage uh, from social media of people on State Highway 2 in the Kaimais and the Bay of Plenty. That's right. It's a that treacherous be. road um, in the middle of the night, a Saturday night in the rain uh, with multiple vehicles with damaged suspension, wheel rims and blind tyres. It must have been terrifying for those people who are just trying to go and visit family or coming back from a sports game to, to have that experience. Look, I mean, the Act Party wants people to be able to get around and get around at speed. And we just think the government's got its priorities all wrong. I mean, every but, time but you so hear much Michael more has been spent up. on Waka Kotahi, on communications consultants, and they've got their nice Māori name now. Why don't we fill in the potholes with communications consultants? Because that would probably, they've probably got the resource to do that, haven't they? Well, Sean, I worked as a roading engineer for uh, for about 10 years on contracts like filling in potholes. And unfortunately, you can't fill them in with communications and stakeholder engagement people. You actually need people with real skills. But they've also got to put the money in the right place, Sean. I mean, Minister Wood stands up and talks about uh, climate change. He talks about reducing speeds. Uh, he talks about his bike bridge. He never talks about how to get New Zealanders to where they want to go safely and at a decent speed. But they can spend, what is it, $680,000 on finding the Maori perspective on journeys. Yeah, well, um, that's pretty disappointing as a taxpayer. But here's something worse, Sean. Our research also discovered they'd spent $45 million on consulting around the country on reducing speed limits on our state highways. That's why we just think 
Minister Wood and NZTA have their priorities all wrong. It's about slowing everyone down rather than ensuring our roads are safe and we can get places we need to go quickly. And I'll just give you an example of how this contrasts. I've just come back from the US where I've been looking at how they fund, finance and deliver infrastructure. And I was blown away. In Texas, uh, the state government has decided to raise speed limits from 70 miles an hour to up to 85 miles an hour, nearly 140 kilometres an hour on their interstate highways. Because between businesses and private people who said, we just want to get to work and get to the places we want to go at a decent speed. And we have safe roads, so why can't we make the most of that? The problem for New Zealand, Sean, we don't have safe roads because either they haven't been built or they haven't been maintained. So what is happening with these potholes? Where does... Because there's got to be a genesis of this problem. Uh, it is clearly a real problem. We can look at it, as I said, for me it's just social media feeds. We have more potholes than we used to. What is the policy change or the emphasis that's changed that is causing this problem? Because until we figure that out, we can't actually fix it. Well, that's right. Sean, there's probably three things at play. Um, the first one is a change in the investment strategy around maintenance. Uh, a few years ago, the transport agency used to go around the country on a regular basis, ripping out and remaking sections of the state highway that were subject to heavy vehicle traffic loads. Yep. They haven't done that. They've relied on a performance-based standard. In other words, uh, we'll fix it when it breaks. Now, that's not appropriate for the 21st century. The second thing is we've allowed a lot more heavy trucks on the road because it's efficient, and you, know, you can build a safe truck that can carry 60 tonnes, but they haven't increase the uh, capacity of the road work too hot to build it. Yep. And then you've got to think about, well, what do New Zealanders need? We actually need to get places safely and at speed. You look at the Waikato Expressway, you look at Transmission Gully, fantastic pieces of road engineering. You can drive on at 110 kilometres an hour from Auckland. If well, there aren't a bunch of greenies blocking them, yeah. Right? Well, true. <laughs> but look, we know we can do it. It's just a matter of how are we going to fund it, how are we going to finance it, um, and for goodness sakes, if you've got a transport agency that's just as focused on climate change and slowing people down, they haven't got the right priorities, and that's why we need to change Okay, so what does the to government need to contract? do? And look, I get the feeling we're at a time when the government will respond to genuine public concern. Look what they did on that that um, Judy solicitor bonus for guilty pleas yesterday. I, I get the feeling like they're listening quite hard now, Simon. What should the well, government do today or tomorrow to start dealing with the pothole problem? Well, Michael Wood needs to explain and be more upfront uh, why these potholes are spreading like a virus and damaging vehicles. Um, and he needs to explain what the priority is going to be in the future because they've got it all wrong. But frankly, Sean, I don't trust him to do that because he has a singular focus on big projects like light rail, slowing people down, Saving us from climate change. Yeah, I and, and, the, said, and the Māori significance of journeys. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I don't trust them to change it. And that, that's why what ACT is offering is a different alternative. I came into the party as a civil engineer, the experience in roading and infrastructure. Uh, we've got a plan that would, that would solve this problem for the whole country. And that is, look, we've got to get the politics out of infrastructure. We've got to say, what's the 30-year plan for each region? The regions should be telling government what they need, not government and ministers telling people what they're going to get, like a bike bridge or a light rail. We think if the region said we need safe roads that our truckies and our travellers can move on at a decent clip, oh, and by the way, we're prepared to pay for them over this time frame, yeah. um, then that's what New Zealanders should get. I'm going to so ask one thing of you. You, me you mentioned the heavier trucks that can drive safely but are putting extra strain on the road. Do we clip? The uh, truckies ticket a bit more, say you are causing part of this problem, you need to pay for part of this solution? Yeah, well, look, I mean, that, that opens up the next issue, which is we're collecting fuel taxes, uh, road user charges, and money from general taxation to pay for roads, but it's not enough. Um, and, and we're going to have to find a way to balance that out in the future. Um, it's likely if we want to drive on these beautiful new four-lane or six-lane um, dual carriageways that are safe, that we're going to have to pay as we go, and that means user charges or some form of tolling. But, you know, I've been to the US just the last couple of weeks, Sean. They're more than happy to pay the tolls if they can drive at 140 km an hour. And That's get, right. to their, get to their destination on time every time. It's the reliability and certainty people want. So the funding model's got to change, um, and we've got to make sure that 
Actually, it's the regions that are telling central government what they need for their region to be successful. We've got to flip the model. I hear you, Simon. Look, Simon, while I've got you there, uh, by election in Gaurav Sharma's electorate, um, uh, Act going to contest that? What do you think of that? Uh, we haven't made a decision yet, but um, it would be fair to say that um, you know, Mr Sharma has um, experienced uh, probably uh, you know, bullying at a level that, by his account, um, would be terrible on a personal level. Mm. So I can understand why he'd want to quit the Labour Party and uh, put himself up for re-election, uh, but um, Act hasn't made a decision about it yet. All right. Hey, Simon, thank you so much for your time, and good luck with dealing with the potholes. Uh, I think everyone think wants it fixed. Cheers. Simon Court there, Act's transport spokesman. He sounds like he knows a thing or two about potholes. You know what I'm thinking, Kelly? Oh, no, I won't, because everyone will do it and we'll Go get on. inundated. I'm just thinking we should start, we should set up like a Facebook page or a, kind of like what you do, and just get people to send us pictures of the potholes. Well, that's all right. That's what my page is, basically, at the yeah, moment. Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, really? So, oh, I have noticed you get a lot of pothole pictures. Oh, yeah.